call to order. Um, with that, Dave, if you could call, as, as we know, let me, before we start even the roll call, uh, we are on conference line. Obviously, I would ask everybody to mute their line. Uh, at the point of appropriate time, we'll call, we'll go the list for questions, uh, as we typically do. Uh, this is, there is no public hearing. This is only a commission of meeting, but at the appropriate time, we'll ask the, those involved with particular issues to speak appropriately. At this time, with the call to order, Dave, if you would have a roll call, please. Alderman Boyd. Brad Bent. Uh, Commissioner, uh, is there Alderman Cohn, not present? Uh, Commissioner Banton? Present. Commissioner Boaz? Present. Commissioner Bradley? Present. Commissioner Conway? Present. Commissioner Peoples? Present. Commissioner Goodman, not present. Commissioner Vines, not present. Commissioner Young? Present. 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 And Chair Strider. Yeah, present. And you have a quorum. With that, I thank you for the quorum. We know this is always a little challenging, but I appreciate your support on it. Uh, the first order of business is the approval of minutes from the May 6th meeting. Keeping in mind, if you make a motion, please state your name and the motion. Jake Benton, with the group. Bradley, second. Um, uh, Commissioner Banton has approved, uh, seconded by Commissioner Bradley. Call for vote, please. Alderman Boyd. He said aye. Alderman Boyd? Yes. Yes. Yes, I said aye. Uh, Commissioner Banton. Aye. Commissioner Boyd. Aye. Commissioner Bradley. Aye. Commissioner Conway. Aye. Commissioner Peoples. Aye. Commissioner Young. Aye. Commissioner Strider. Aye. Motion passes. All voting aye. Very good. There are two rezoning issues on the agenda this this afternoon. Uh, Cecilia will be presenting the first one, I believe. Uh, yes, sir. And that that is at one one two nine seven Amherst, followed by the second one, which Roman will present. Uh, at that point, uh, go ahead, Cecilia. It's all yours. Thank you. This uh, first item on your agenda this evening is for the rezoning of twelve ninety seven Amherst Place. Uh, the applicant wishes to consolidate an existing vacant parcel known as twelve ninety seven Amherst with the adjacent parcel to the west, which is an existing daycare facility called the Good Shepherd Infant Toddler, Toddler Center. The subject site um, on Amherst Place is currently zoned B2 Family Dwelling District, and the adjacent parcel they are hoping to consolidate with is zoned F Neighborhood Commercial. So as you're all aware, a property owner cannot consolidate two parcels with different zoning designations as it would create a dual zoned parcel. Go to the next slide. Uh, additionally, the applicant has been before the Board of Adjustment for the use of a daycare facility, which is not permitted in the B2 Family Dwelling District, uh, as, well, as well as uh, for several setback conflicts with the existing zoning code. So the Board of Adjustment uh, finding this made it a condition of their approved variance to pursue the rezoning and ensure consistency between the two parcels, as well as the proposed use. The strategic land use designation for the site is neighborhood preservation area, which aims to provide for commercial uses that cater to the immediate neighborhood needs uh, and which reflect the traditional role of the activities uh, in the city. So uh, given that the request is to permit the expansion of a neighborhood service, which would provide much needed and high quality ch uh, child care services to the immediate neighborhoods, staff finds the request of the petition in compliance with the strategic land use plan. Um, and recommends approval of the petition to rezone the parcel to F Neighborhood Commercial District. The zoning administrator, if you go to the next slide, finds that the request would achieve three objectives, including provide the expansion of the existing child care services and addition of child, uh, adult daycare services. It brings the development into conformity with the zoning code and the condition of the variance that was granted and, the allow, and uh, allows for good zoning practices that works toward the elimination of improper zoning designation. Given that staff finds it uh, also in request with the strategic land use plan, as I mentioned, we recommend approval. If you have any questions, I would be happy to answer them. Okay. 
At this point, we'll entertain questions from the commissioner. Going down the list, Commissioner Boyd, any questions? Okay, no questions. Okay, Commissioner Banta. Um, do we have anyone from the development team on the line with us tonight? That is a good question. Um, Paul Boyer, I think, or Cortega Collins, are you on the line by any chance? Or the property owner? I didn't have a question. I just wanted to make a comment. Um, okay. Full disclosure, I, I am the chair of the West End and Visitation Parks Neighborhood um, Development Review Committee. And Ms. Collins, who is the developer of this project, recently came and presented this project to us at um, one of our recent committee meetings. And um, the neighborhood is very excited about this project. Um, she was great, answered all of our questions, and uh, we voted unanimously to give her a letter of support for this project. So just wanted to say that um, neighborhood residents here are very excited um, for this project. So thanks. Right. Thank you, Commissioner uh, Banta. Commissioner Boyes? No questions. Commissioner Bradley? No questions. Just uh, thanks, uh, Commissioner Banton, for adding that narrative. Uh, sounds like a great project. Thank you. Commissioner Conway? No question. Commissioner Peoples? No questions. Commissioner Young? No question. Chair, having no questions at this point, I would entertain a motion to approve the recommendation of the staff as it relates to 1297 Amherst Place. I move to approve. Second, Banton. It's been moved by, uh, by uh, Commissioner Boyd, seconded by Commissioner Banton. Call for vote. Previous roll. Call for previous roll. Hearing no objections. Previous roll approved. With that, that takes us into Roman's presentation. Uh, Roman will be presenting on 5720 uh, to Giverville Avenue. And Roman, it's yours at this point. Uh, very good. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. This is a proposed uh, rezoning of one parcel uh, with the address of 5720 <laughs> Avenue um, from the A single family dwelling district and the H area commercial district to only the H area commercial district. The, the petition was filed uh, by the petitioner um, because the A zoning district does not allow the uh, proposed uses. Um, the site, as you can see on the map, is about one and a half acres in size. It's located at the northwest corner of the Bolivar Avenue and the Metrolink right-of-way uh, near Forest Park Parkway. Um, the Forest Park the Bolivar Metrolink station is shown on the map just uh, slightly to the east of the Bolivar. Uh, it's located in the Skinker de Bolivar neighborhood just north of Forest Park. The existing use on the rezoning site is a park and ride lot that's used by uh, transit riders. Uh, the parcel is currently owned by Bi-State Development a Agency, um, better known as Metro. And the uh, petitioner is proposing the construction of Expo at Forest Park uh, this is a, a very exciting project, one that's been a long time in the making. Uh, it's almost a $100 million project uh, and is being tabbed as a mixed-use, transit-oriented development project. It would be built on the rezoning site as well as the um, adjacent parcel located uh, to the north along the Bolivar. The um, petitioner is Pearl Capital Management, uh, which is... Uh, an affiliate of Pearl Companies, an Indianapolis-based firm that has uh, recently started doing some development in the city. Um, it has the, uh, the zoning site currently under contract, and representing the firm tonight is Patrick Equicamp of the law firm of Hush Blackwell, and Joel Floss, and I'm probably mispronouncing his name, he's with the architectural firm of, of Trivers, and they'll be available for questions after the presentation. Next slide, please. This is an aerial photo of the um, rezoning site in vicinity. Uh, the rezoning site is outlined in red. Um, as you can see, there's a large parking lot uh, currently. Uh, I understand it uh, recently closed uh, in, in light of this upcoming development. The, the other parcel I referenced is the uh, parcel immediately to the north 
Um, that's currently a vacant uh, strip shopping center. So the proposed project would be built on both the rezoning site as well as that large rectangular parcel to the north uh, up to uh, Waterman Avenue. Uh, immediately to the west of the uh, site is uh, primarily single-family buildings, uh, some of which are fairly close to the, those two parcels. In contrast, the area to the west on the other side of the Bolivar Place has much larger parcels and is primarily apartment buildings and condo buildings. Um, I referenced the Forest Park to Bolivar Metrolink station. It's basically located at the intersection of the Bolivar and uh, uh, Forest Park Parkway. You can see the uh, Metro uh, logo there a little bit to the right of the Bolivar Avenue. And it's uh, basically the site where the two Metrolink routes um, split off. Uh, one goes northwestward to the airport, the other one goes to Clayton and beyond. Uh, the green line that you see going down to Bolivar Avenue is the uh, route of the now closed uh, loop trolley. And hopefully it'll resurface sometime in the near future. And it terminates at the History Museum located at the bottom of the image there in Forest Park. Next slide, please. This is an existing zoning map um, for the uh, the zoning site and uh, adjacent properties. As you can see, the um, frontage of the rezoning site is zoned H area commercial, uh, that being in, in orange, while the remainder of the parcel at the rear is zoned A single family dwelling district. In these types of cases, the zoning district with the most restrictive regulations applies. So in effect, this entire parcel is zoned A single family which doesn't allow apartment buildings or commercial uses. And that, of course, is the reason why the petitioner has requested um, a rezoning. Also to the north, the adjacent parcel that's part of the development site is already zoned H area commercial, so there's no need to rezone it. This is a um, site plan of the uh, development site that was submitted by the petitioner. Um, and it's broken up into the, the two parcels. Uh, the first is the, the rezoning site. Uh, which includes the southern building. Uh, it's a seven-story building, has a second-floor pool as part of its uh, amenity deck, includes 163 apartments with two small retail spaces, uh, 234 parking spaces, and I should point out that 115 of those are reserved for Metro Transit users. So the 115 spaces that are currently at the park and ride lot, uh, which is now closed, will be replaced by these uh, reserved parking spaces um, at the rezoning site. The second building on the adjacent parcel is a smaller building, four or five stories, includes 124 apartments uh, and four retail spaces, one of which is a 15,000 square foot grocery store and three smaller spaces and 127 parking spaces. Uh, it also includes the required number of bike racks uh, in the city, as all large apartment projects are. And these probably will be well used uh, given the fact the uh, proximity of the development site to both Forest Park and the St. Vincent Greenway, which is located uh, along the, uh, the Bolivar Avenue. Uh, this is a uh, rendering of the, um, of the development site, again, submitted by the petitioner. We're looking northwestward uh, from Forest Park Avenue. Um, you can see the seven-story building with the uh, pool uh, in, the, in that gap there between the uh, two wings of the uh, building and the uh, smaller building um, at the back. And then, of course, you see the, uh, the, uh, the sign for the uh, uh, metro uh, station in the foreground. The uh, city strategic land use plan designates, uh, let me backtrack a little bit, if you wouldn't mind bringing that up, Scott, I did want to point out that back in um, that February of this year, the City's Preservation Board um, reviewed the development project and uh, gave it its preliminary approval with the condition that uh, the construction materials and the final drawings be reviewed by the cultural resources. So it's, it's gone through its approval process, uh, but it needs to be um, checked prior to the issuance of building permits by the Cultural Resources Office. Sorry about that. Thank you. Next slide. The City Strategic Land Use Plan designates uh, both the um, rezoning site as well as the um, adjacent parcel to the north as a specially mixed-use area 
which encourages a, a, a mix of uh, various land uses. Next slide, please. Thank you. The um, rezoning site is also located within the boundaries of the Skinker de Bolivar Neighborhood Urban Design and Development Plan. This is a uh, neighborhood plan that was adopted by the Planning Commission in 2018. The neighborhood plan's recommendation for the rezoning site, uh, what's being referred to as the South Building, is to create identifiable TOD, transit-oriented development, and to improve access to the uh, existing Metrolink station. The recommendation in the neighborhood plan for the adjacent parcel is to redevelop the existing retail into urban mixed-use development. So clearly, this development project, by providing both residential and commercial uses and providing parking spaces to uh, encourage the use of uh, uh, metro transit, both buses and uh, rail, um, is, a, is a true uh, transit-oriented development and mixed-use project and fits in well with what the neighborhood plan had recommended in, in 2018. So in summary, uh, the proposed rezoning of parcel would achieve administrator. Uh, it would allow new and residential commercial options in the uh, immediate area. It would bring the subject property to the zoning code. Uh, as we just heard, the rezoning is in conformity with the strategic land use plan as well as the adopted neighborhood plan, and staff is recommending approval of the proposed rezoning. Um, I'd be happy to answer any questions. And Patrick Eppelkamp, again, of Hush Blackwell, and Joel Boss of uh, Trivers are also available for any questions you may have. Thank you. Thank you, Roman. What I'd like to do, I'll give Joel or Patrick an opportunity to speak first, to speak first before we go into questions. If somebody wants to highlight anything that was not spoken on by Roman. Uh, so, Patrick? Yeah, I am Thank driving you. through a band um, cell area right now. Period. Uh, can you hear? Can you? Yeah, we I think can. I might be trying to talk over somebody. Yeah, one second. Uh, you can mute Steve's line for us. Uh, I'm not sure who's controlling the who has a call. Let's see. Um, there you go, Patrick. Thank you. Yeah. So as Roman said, uh, I am Patrick Echo Camp, an attorney of Hus Blackwell, uh, representing uh, Pearl Capital on this project. Um, Roman did a great job. Thank you very much for the uh, for the overview. Uh, just a couple of things I wanted to point out. Um, those 115 spaces that Roman mentioned, um, they will be for use by Metro but they will also be available for use by other commercial users of the uh, other retail or of the, of the project, including the uh, commercial users uh, for the retail spaces. Um, in addition to the, um, the neighborhood plan in 2018, um, this also conforms to the TOD study that was done on this project back in September of 2013. Um, that project highlighted this, this corner specifically for a TOD project. So, um, in addition to the neighborhood plan, this, this project clearly adheres to that TOD project. Um, and then another thing I just wanted to point out um, is that, <clears throat> excuse me, I think um, although it's not currently in existence, uh, and Joel, he can uh, jump in here if I, I don't do it justice, but uh, when they first met with uh, Don Rowe and his office, um, you know, they were, they were kind of, they were encouraged to um, design the project to that form-based code because that will be forthcoming and that, that form-based code is a, a great expression of the neighborhood's desires and interests. Um, and so uh, those are just high-level things that I wanted to, to cover and to point out and to, and to make the commissioners aware. Um, and so from there, I'm happy to answer any questions that, uh, that may come up. And if Joel wants to add anything, please jump in. Yeah, Joel, at this point, would you like to add anything or entertain the questions that come? Um, I'll be happy to entertain any questions that come okay. up. I think mean, Patrick had a, had a good summary with that um, and just the way we've, we've kind of gone about the process here. And um, uh, the form based code is certainly um, something we know is coming down the pipe um, that uh, we've really been paying attention to as well and trying to incorporate all these plans, um, as, as Norman had highlighted uh, throughout the years here into the development and the, really the true intention of this site and the TOD practices and, and some smart zoning um, that has been identified on this site for quite some time. Okay. With that, then I will entertain the 
questions from the, all, from the commissioners, and I begin with uh, Commissioner Boyd. Any questions? Um, thank you. Uh, I want to say this is a horrible project. It's not in a good location. I think it should be in the Wells Goodfellow neighborhood. It will make a much better project over there uh, and will add half the cost, I promise you. So I don't know if I can vote for this because it's not in the right place. Now, I've heard the presentation before, and there's probably a little envy there. Um, so I just want to encourage and challenge these phenomenal developers to look north of Del Mar. Um, you, uh, the West End neighborhood, um, Jake Banton and his team are doing a phenomenal job of putting a good plan together. And then I'm just the next neighborhood over in the Hampton Heights neighborhood. Then we have Wells Goodfell. At some point, you guys are going to have nowhere to go in the Central West End, and you're going to have to come north. And I will be waiting, and I challenge you to get there next year, okay? Yes, I'm, I'm just, uh, heard loud and clear. I understood. I will present the challenge to, to the people I work with and try and make it happen. All right. Thanks. And, and to follow that, just as a note, the older woman from the 28th Ward did endorse this project, <laughs> unlike other aldermen, possibly. Uh, Commissioner Banson, at this point, any questions? <laughs> yeah, a couple of questions. Um, what is the setback? on this parcel from the um, single-family houses next door? Yeah. Uh, Commissioner Bannon, this is, this is Joel Fritz from Trippers. Um, we're about 30 feet from the original, on the edge of the property line there. Um, as you can see on the site plan, um, we're putting a new um, residential-style cedar fence along the existing the um, driveway, and then we have a landscape buffer, and then we have a fire lane um, along that paved edge, and then another landscape buffer before you get to the building there. In total, so it's, how, it's 30 feet. And how many stories is that that westernmost section there? Um, so you you can't completely make it out very clearly um, on the on the plan here, but um, we're it's the building wraps around to the west, where five stories on that side, on the west side, um, which was a lot of feedback we've got from the neighborhood um, as we kind of met with them. Uh, the building on that edge got further away from the neighbor on the west, and the building got shorter on that western edge as well. Great. And in talking about your your meetings with the neighborhood. Um, I know that you guys have been going through multiple iterations with them. Have you gotten final sign off and approval from Skinker Developer for this project yet? We have. Um, we got their support for um, going into the cultural resources uh, review, um, and we've met with them um, about twelve, uh, actually fourteen times um, in, in total here. Um, and you're, you're correct. We have gone through multiple iterations on it. Um, one with, um, uh, like I said, a, a taller mass into the west, closer to the western property line. Um, more parking. We actually had a, a higher parking ratio, and the neighborhood actually asked us to back that down um, uh, to a lesser ratio, where a 0.85 for a residential unit uh, before we were a one to one. So. Um, we've taken a lot of that into account as we've gone through this uh, iterative process, um, and uh, we're kind of what we have today based on that feedback. That, that's very encouraging to hear. You know, as someone that is championing those efforts in the West End neighborhood, I want to applaud you as the architects and developers for being so open to engaging with the neighborhood and, and taking into account their feedback. Um, one last question, just out of uh, more curiosity than anything, is the developer purchasing these lots or are these long-term leases from Metro? Joel, this is, I'll take this one, Joel. Um, yep. So, uh, Commissioner Band, this is Patrick Eccleton. Uh, so, we are purchasing the property from uh, Metro. So, it's a 5720, that's the subject's property. We will be acquiring key interest in that property. Um, and then the property to uh, the north, the retail center, um, the way that the current owner wants it structured, we'll be actually entering into a 99-year uh, lease. So uh, with that, with the retail center owner. 
So uh, effectively, you know, we will have all development rights. We'll be responsible for everything. Um, they'll obviously just be the fee owner. And uh, but it, it'll be effectively like we will be owning the property. And but they're going to be, um, they'll be, uh, you know, a cohesive development. And uh, one last question I think of it. When, uh, what's the construction time frame for these? Yeah, so this is, uh, Bill, you can add any color to it, but, um, you know, we are, you know, drawings have been, you know, submitted. We are working to to get into the ground um, ASAP, um, and then I think it's probably the 18-month construction schedule, Bill. Yeah, it's, it's phased. Um, north should finish first, and then we should roll into finishing south, which will be an aggregate of about two years by the time we start demo um, on the north building, move to the south, and then by the time the south gets phased out, um, we'll, it'll be two years time to by the time all of a Excellent. Well, just wanted to reiterate again, I think this is a fabulous pro project. I um, want to see more of this type of development around metro stations in, in St. Louis, so keep up the good work. No further questions. Thank you, Commissioner Banton. Commissioner Boyens, any questions? I only have one question, and I have to admit, I do not remember. Did the neighborhood plan call for reconnecting the street grid, and was there any consideration given to that? Um, I'll let, I can answer that, Patrick. Um, the neighborhood plan, um, and anything that we saw, and I know there's a lot out there with those that did not uh, suggest reconnecting, um, the neighborhood uh, definitely did not want that. Um, we're reconnecting from a visual standpoint, um, but there will be no direct vehicular access from the Bolivar to the Giverville other than a, a fire lane that fire trucks can access in case of emergency through that closet space. Um, but that was a very um, direct, uh, very clear message we heard from the neighborhood that they did not want the Giverville to reconnect to uh, the Bolivar there. My recollection is, is that that is true, that uh, uh, as uh, most of you know, the Giverville ends at a cul-de-sac at the uh, north-south alley line uh, before reaching the Bolivar. Um, and my recollection is the neighborhood plan uh, recommended retaining uh, that existing street closure at that location. Okay. Any, any other questions, Commissioner Boyce? Um, no, no, I think it's a great project. Sorry, we just had to cook you all this. <laughs> the great project. Looking forward to seeing some of this um, in reality. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Commissioner. Commissioner Bradley. Any questions or comments? No questions. Thank you, Commissioner Conway. If there are any questions or comments, no question. Okay, Commissioner Peoples. No questions. Commissioner Young. No questions. Okay, and Chair, having and Chair having no questions uh, at that point, uh, we would entertain a motion to approve the rezoning uh, from an A to an H as re as recommended by the staff. Uh, I'll entertain a motion at this point. So moved. Second. Moved, moved by Commissioner Boyd with the with reservations and seconded by Commissioner Boyes. I'll entertain a motion to, a motion to approve. I mean, a vote, please. Previous roll. Call for previous roll. Hearing no objections. Previous roll in place. Uh, thank you. That goes now to the Board of Aldermen. We thank you, Roman, for your presentation and, and information on that. Uh, I know Cecilia has a bit, and I know uh, Don may have something, I think. And I, I think I want to just interject at this point something, and that uh, Cecilia will Thank you very much. Next thing is to just commend the, the neighborhood and the team for working on this process, uh, recognizing that there was lots of public meetings. And also, we mentioned uh, a number of things that have been done by staff and used uh, city resources to help form uh, what the flight menu would be through the TOD study that our staff participated in, uh, some preliminary work in form based code. Uh, that's all uh, good stuff. And I'd be amiss not to uh, make a shout out to John Langer at Bi State Development Corporation, who has been pretty diligent about this parking lot, not just sort of slipping through the cracks of what Bi State might do with it uh, to make sure it really ended up being a quality design and TOD like this. Uh, 
to be commended to John and, and Bison for the patience and diligence and the elbowing to make sure that happens. So with that, Mr. Chairman, you have no more action items, but Cecilia will give a brief update on uh, on network plans. Thanks, <clears throat> One more. All right, thank you guys. Um, I don't want to keep you too long. Uh, this last item on your agenda is a repeat informational item from last month. Uh, we wanted to provide another opportunity for discussion if any of you would like it. Uh, we also wanted to note that these standards, um, just kind of a point to make is that these standards provide a benefit in a couple of ways. Um, first is that we'll be recruiting and training staff uh, soon, and these standards do provide a common understanding of what is expected, and they set a tone for what neighborhood planning needs to look like in the city of St. Louis, um, especially as regards to best practices. And so we want to see this as um, kind of an exciting time, an exciting change in the way that we do neighborhood planning in the city, uh, and be responsive to community needs rather than being prescriptive. And the second is that uh, various St. Louis neighborhoods have found the resources or have uh, worked with organizations in uh, anchor institutions in the city to do planning at various, in various areas of the city. So this minimum standard also allows us to communicate with them um, quickly and as evenly as possible to residents, anchor institutions, and consultants what the minimum standards will be for city adoption. Uh, and which in turn will provide a strong basis for implementation. So um, we did receive a lot of input, well, input from um, a couple of commissioners, and uh, we appreciate that feedback immensely. Uh, so I just want to say that um, this particular uh, item as presented today doesn't reflect those changes. We kind of wanted to make sure that we were able to get all of the feedback before um, we made those changes. Um, so we will be uh, reaching out to some of you individually as well just to um, target some of that feedback. Um, those comments also included feedback for the draft reports, which you all received, and so we'll be doing those updates as well. But um, I wanted to also provide the opportunity for commissioners if you wanted to have discussion or comments or anything like that. Um, now is a great time to do that as well. Okay. Thank you. So, so you will simply open it to the floor without going to roll if someone has questions at this time. Please just identify yourself and then question. Okay. At this point, if, it, if there are any, you can reach directly out to Cecilia, uh, either via phone or email with your questions and concerns, and I'm sure she and the staff will be glad to answer those at this time, you know, at that time. Be prepared for the inbound. Well, this is Cecilia may also call you. Yeah. This is Jake. I just wanted to make one comment. You know, I uh, I did a thorough review <laughs> of of uh, the documents, and I encourage everyone to uh, to look through them. I think they're 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 great. Um, I know Cecilia put in a lot of uh, work into them, so um, I know she would appreciate any any further comments you have, and and they're a good read. So. Take a look at it. Thank you. Thank you. All right. All right. With that, Don, any other further items from you? Not tonight. Thank you. So, so you anything from you? No, thank you, everyone, for your time. Okay. All right. Prior to entertaining a, a, a motion for dismissal, I simply want to uh, recognize and send sympathy and prayers to the family of Captain Dorn, retired St. Louis Police Chief. Uh, police captain from from our district. Uh, we wish the family the best of that. Uh, and the city did just issue a curfew. Just came out as we all noticed from uh, effective uh, from 9 p.m. tonight to 6 a.m. tomorrow. So I wish your family safeness. With that, I'll entertain a motion for the closing of the meeting. I'll move. It was moved by Commissioner Manton and seconded by Commissioner Bradley. Let this meeting be adjourned. Thank you very much and be safe.